That's right, we are finally back on the YouTube wagon. You're probably thinking to yourself, Simon, why did you vanish during the WrestleMania season? Well, as you may know, over at What Culture, we did a bunch of videos. And as soon as I was done with WrestleMania weekend, I've come to here, which is New Jersey, because somehow I'm starring as the main villain in the last match wrestling theatre rock and roll musical that is doing a mini tour of the East Coast come late April, early May. And now I'm official E in rehearsal mode. So this is going to be in my digs for the next couple of weeks, but the content isn't going to stop, especially because WrestleMania weekend has now come to an end. You can probably tell from my demeanor and my voice and my overall energy levels. I am totally wrecked. What a tremendous few days. I think, well, you may have seen the metrics. Not only was it the biggest WrestleMania ever, which is the tagline that WWE was using, but the numbers are there, the graphs are there, the figures are there. It smashed a ridiculous amount of records, including being like the most watched entertainment event ever on Peacock. It had something like 1.2 billion minutes of views or something crazy like that. You have to look up the statistics, but the point is this. More people, arguably, I think, maybe arguably, watch this WrestleMania more than any other WrestleMania in history, which when you think about some of the events we've had in the past, I think is absolutely amazing. I don't just think it was the two nights of WrestleMania itself that we will talk about. I think it's everything we did on SmackDown and everything we did on Raw and really everything we've done in the 12 months leading up to this with Cody Rhodes being the nucleus to everything because over the last couple of years, the SmackDown before WrestleMania, it's kind of been like video packages and obviously leading into the Hall of Fame and I always find the Hall of Fame a little bit weird when it does come right after SmackDown. But on this one, I think probably because it is a brand new era, the Paul Levesque era, as everybody kept talking about, we didn't necessarily focus on the main events like The Rock and Cody were kind of put to one side, although Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins were on the show to beat up the bloodline but we made sure for example the one that I like the most is we had the angle for the United States Championship thing Kevin Owens and Randy Orton being all buddy buddy which is going to tie into the match Logan Paul across the road at the Lincoln Field Stadium whatever the hell it's called and I didn't realize that either you know, we all turned up and if you've never been there before it's basically the Wells Fargo Center is here which is where Raw Smackdown NXT came from and then Ford Financial Field Ford Financial Field Lincoln Financial Field it's like you could throw a piece of paper at it should you so want to although the wind would probably blow it away because the weather in Philadelphia was absolutely nuts but they're so damn close and of course it ends with um, Logan Paul getting his took us whooped and Kevin Owens and Randy Orton being on the same page and we get to WrestleMania oh, actually this is the first thing that will segue into that I thought that match was so damn entertaining I imagined it was going to be given everybody that was involved but the fact we didn't do the traditional oh my gosh Randy Orton and Kevin Owens fell out and instead they realized well I want to pin Logan Paul and you want to pin Logan Paul, so let's just fight and see what's going to happen. We also had, Randy Orton had said in the lead up to WrestleMania that he was going to try and argue that he's never done before. I understand why more people aren't talking about it. This was, abs this was absolutely sublime because usually it's somebody doing a move into the RKO. Whereas here it was Randy Orton, like 43 year old Randy Orton, whatever he is, shifting in midair after a pop-up powerbomb and hitting the RKO. Then, of course, Logan Ball comes in. He screws over Randy Orton. He hits an amazing, bizarre shooting star press and he pins Kevin Owens for the one, two, three, which means when we get to SummerSlam, maybe we do one-on-one -on -one between Randy Orton and Logan Paul and then we really have entered the Phantom Zone or LA Knight got a win against AJ Styles. People have been talking about the fact that he should probably win the United States title. And then what you could do with that is basically what we did with Gunther for the last 666 days. Because I still, given everything, think the Intercontinental title is a little bit higher than the US title although the United States Championship is definitely moving up at the moment. And if you give it to someone like LA Knight, the cool thing with that is you're not just doing the same old heel thing, although Gunther and Logan Paul are very different bad guys, but you can turn LA Knight into this mythical being. And much like Gunther is probably about to move into the main event scene, maybe you can do that with LA Knight as well. But really, SmackDown did a great job in setting everything up. I thought Paul Heyman's Hall of Duction, Hall of Fame induction speak was just brilliant. Like if you were watching ECW back in the late 90s, that would have made you feel warm and fuzzy in your tum tum. It just flowed so nicely into Monday Night Raw. And look, I get it. Cody Rhodes and The Rock spoke for about 45 minutes. I think I could have watched them go for another 45 minutes because it was just so intriguing. And we did something that we should always do in any form of storytelling is we planted a seed and we had a bit of a mystery because The Rock put something in Cody Rhodes' hands. He says, don't you ever break my heart again. And now we have to figure out what this was. And Cody doesn't even have to reveal it next week. What I would actually do is maybe Cody does go to tell you it was, I don't know, The Rock's phone number or whatever it may be. 
and then somebody jumps him. It could be Sheamus, who is confirmed to be coming back. It could be Gunther, if you want to go there straight away. And given that The Rock isn't going to be back for six months until he's filmed this next movie, that can just be something that is hanging around in the background, that eventually when he does return, we go back to that, and we can start telling that as well. And I think that probably is going to play into WrestleMania 41. And I think, really, all of this pivoting, which WWE has talked about as well, is going to do the world of good. Because if we had just done The Rock versus Roman Reigns, it probably would have been The Rock's last match, maybe. But now, if we do Cody versus The Rock at WrestleMania 41, I would probably say that given whatever Roman Reigns is going to do, he can accidentally on purpose screw over The Rock. That gets Cody his win back. No problem with that because, of course, it means we go to WrestleMania 42 where we can finally do The Rock versus Roman Reigns and that will probably be Dwayne Johnson's last ever match. I want to make it clear, obviously, I can't say the following words unless we have had all the other versions of The Rock, but this version has to be the best one yet. It's just so damn compelling and it's so damn good. Look, I never mind when he came back and he did the babyface stuff with the catchphrases. Quintessentially, that Rock character is just better when he's being a massive asshole. I mean, he dropped an F-bomb on Raw. And obviously I got to hear it because I was there live. I was very privileged. And I went absolutely nuts. And again, I was so captivated by both of them. I thought it was wonderful. And that tag match was brilliant too. Like, could it have been cut down by about 10, 15 minutes maybe? But this just meant I got 10 or 15 minutes more of The Rock doing his thing. And I genuinely think it was a really smart idea for The Rock to pin Cody Rhodes. A, because again, we can move forward to next year's WrestleMania and do that. But also when you get to night two, we finally finish the story and Cody Rhodes becomes the WWE Champion in the most over-the-top, ridiculous, <laughs> shenanigan-based wrestling match I've ever seen. That's why it may be my favourite wrestling match ever. John Cena comes out, Seth Rollins of The Shield comes out, obviously we had The Undertaker, and yes, I get it, we talked about it a lot in other videos. I would imagine that spot was reserved for, reserved for Stone Cold Steve Austin, but there may be a silver lining to this. Maybe Steve Austin is that one, if I do come back for my last run, I want to work with someone, I'm just speculating here, like a CM Punk, or maybe he wants to work with Cody, although I doubt that. I'd imagine he wants something that probably away from the world championship but if that's what i'm gonna get i'm happy to be patient but i'm with you i had my own disappointment based on expectations that i created for myself however i do like the justification world the final boss of wrestlemania for years was the undertaker so it does tie in i mean actually the most interesting part about that of course is the fact that the at first when seth rollins runs in in the shield character he got whooped so fast <laughs> It was like, what was that? But to be fair to him, it was like his third appearance over WrestleMania. But also, it was the fact that Rock was obsessed with this character. This is the dude that had turned on him 10 years ago. This is the dude that had broken up the Shield. And as he has said in other matches, this is the dude that has turned him into the Tribal Chief. So he could have finished off Cody Rhodes, right? Cody Rhodes was right there, but he wasn't able to do it because he's still obsessed with this version of Seth, which says to me, when Rollins does come back, because I think he's taken a month off now just to rest his knee up, and also, pff, does he deserve it? What an awesome guy that is when it comes to the professional wrestling. You could probably do Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins, which is a feud people have been talking about for ages, and given the fact that no championship would be on the line because Seth lost his to Drew, and obviously Roman lost his to Cody, that actually makes it more interesting. So if we have actually used WrestleMania 40 to plant a bunch of seeds, some that we've already talked about, then it's just going to make it even better. And genuinely, I think the start of WrestleMania Night 2 is one of the best WrestleMania opens ever because Drew versus Seth Rollins was just a spam your finisher match, which I always enjoy. But then, of course, Drew wins, which I enjoy because I'm a big fan of the man. But then CM Punk does his thing. You could see it coming a mile away, but that's because it makes sense. And sometimes you don't want things to be 2 plus 2 equals potato. Out comes Damian Priest. Someone has finally explained to him, I know that briefcase you've got, you meant to cash in. He does do that and he's the champion. So now we've got to do Drew versus Damian Priest, we've got to do Drew versus CM Punk, maybe Seth Rollins has to get back involved, we still want to see Seth Rollins versus CM Punk, so the fact that all of this is there, I think it's wonderful. And yes, going back to the main event, it could be the best ending to WrestleMania, ever because Cody Rhodes is just such a lovable person he just is man there's something so endearing and such a nice quality about him that you just want him to do well and when everybody comes out there especially because it was the people that Roman Reigns had screwed over after the over the last three four years whatever the hell it was and they hoist him up on the shoulders it was just like man and he calls out Triple H and that was excellent too and he does everything on Raw and everything in the post-match press conference I just thought it was awesome and a lot of people were saying oh night two was better than night one but I like the fact that two nights flowed into the other because of course we got the bloodline rules match and the secret a highlight was Cody Rhodes getting a table out at the start of that thing and then Roman Reigns pushed it back under the ring. But actually, even when you go through night one, you know, I thought the Gunther versus Sami Zayn was a tremendous match. I mean, that really, really, really was good. And I really enjoyed Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley as well. If you have the time, go back and watch it. And I'm sure you know this by now because I'm well late. Becky Lynch did that match with like a 104 temperature or whatever it was and strep throat. It makes it 
even more incredible. Like it truly, truly does. And there's other highlights you can just pull out when your brain starts thinking about it too, such as the Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair, Naomi entrance, <laughs> live especially. It was just like, well, these three people are stars. And that's what I want at WrestleMania. And of course, if you want to say that the Bailey versus EO Sky match was the best one of the weekend, I'm not going to argue with you. And those last five minutes were absolutely tremendous. I mean, someone said it was akin to a stardom match. I totally see where they're coming from. Not only did it sort of elevate EO Sky and losing, because maybe we moved away from that because she didn't have that many match defenses really we kind of kept them sparse for better or worse but it also told you or reminded you once more that bailey is so damn good and as always so underrated was a bit confused by the entrance but again we'll see what happens on smackdown but there were so many nice moments as well as the ones that made you go oh my gosh i can't believe it so i think raw did a great job as well again like i said the last couple of years haven't been very good john cena being on their team with um, our truth is always going to make it fun and once again i do think we've set up a chad gable hill turn we're going to do Sami Zayn versus chad gable next week in montreal and Maybe we don't pull the trigger there, but I imagine that Sami Zayn wins and Chad eventually goes so crazy, he turns on him and then you've got that feud there as well. And again, I keep mentioning his name. What is Gunther going to do? I'd actually maybe sideline him for a little bit so when he does come back, it will feel like, oh my gosh, we have another final boss. And what I would do is I would have Sheamus turn up on whatever show you want and he boots Cody Rhodes <laughs> right in the face and you go into Sheamus versus Cody Rhodes. Because Sheamus is a dude. He is vastly underrated and he... He has this way of making himself feel credible, even though we haven't seen him in a while. When that's done too, he could probably then feel into a Sami Zayn feud as well and finally win that IC Championship, which I do believe is the last belt he needs to win. And he's won everything and the man is deserving of that career. So I love the fact that we can sit here and we can speculate and we can talk about everything that did go down. But other than the cold, <laughs> it was so cold on night one, it probably did affect the crowd noise a little bit. I just thought all of this was an absolute treat. And WWE, momentum breeds momentum, right? And at the moment, they are just on an absolute tear. And when we get to SmackDown, if they are able to carry that on, and then of course we get to the end of month and they're doing the WWE draft, who the hell knows where we're going to be in May, June, July, August. And then yeah, you're at SummerSlam, which is an event you know they're going to put loads of, loads of money and pageantry and pomp and circumstance behind. So... This kind of proves that the company has moved on because there was a time where as soon as WrestleMania was done, you went into this lull, mostly because, yes, people would watch the Raw after WrestleMania and be like, oh, this sucks, it's so rubbish, whereas now we're not doing that. So I cannot wait to see what we do with all of this. I love the fact that Damien Priest is a world champion. I saw some people being really disparaging about that. Make people world champions because it creates more stars. For years, once again, we were saying WWE doesn't create any stars. And now you have about... 20 matches on paper that you could do tomorrow and people would be massively intrigued by it. So absolute banger for me. We said going in on this very channel that it could be one of the best WrestleManias of all time. I think we need to let things low. You don't want, to get you don't want recency bias to get in the way. But for me, certainly, I think it's in that category. I had a wonderful time watching it. I am going to watch it back on TV because, again, you get a different perspective. Love the fact that Rhea Ripley is still the champion. I thought that was great too. And obviously, Awesome Truth are the tag champions and Grace and Austin Theory are the tag champions as well. So basically, all my favourites won which is probably why I am enjoying it as much as I am. And of course, you had the CM Punk screw job number two on Raw when he took out Drew and allowed Jey Uso to win. Why can't we do Jey Uso versus Damian Priest at Backlash? I presume that Cody is going to have a match. And if we are going to start having two world title matches on shows, which we haven't for a while, because of course Roman Reigns had a very, very sparse schedule, then... I'm not saying it in a terrible way. It sounds that way. But some people are like, oh, man, Jey Uso versus Damien Priest doesn't sound like a mega main event. Okay, but if we put them in that position, maybe they can get there. And Cody right now, who is a super-duper baby face, can fill that role. So it's absolutely a couple of thumbs up for me. If you're into your star ratings, we're going to give it 5.27.9 because those are just arbitrary numbers. But it's cool. Like, I get why people do it, and I have no problem with it. And yes, I'm looking forward to SmackDown and then Raw and SmackDown and Raw. And I do want to see what they do on the draft because, of course, Roxanne Perez and Ilya Dragunov of, we're both on that Raw, and they are the champions, and it feels to me like a lot of main roster guys are now going to go down to NXT, because that's the story here. So there's every chance, even though Elia has declared for the draft, he actually stays on NXT. But why not? You may as well try and sell it as a third brand, given that you do have a TV for that as a TV deal for that as well. So superb stuff, and Cody Rhodes' story obviously is just beginning. I know that's the cheesiest thing that anybody can ever say, but that's the other thing. People are like, oh man, if Roman Reigns loses the championship, what other stories do we tell? Whatever story you want. Do you think wrestling started in 2020? 
when he won the championship. It's not true. It's been going on for a long time. And again, Cody has that nature about him. That even if he did lose that championship in six weeks and he won it back in 12 weeks, I just think people would get behind him even more. So yeah, massive, massive, massive couple of thumbs. An awesome few days. And now I do have to rest. But before I do do that, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the bell, ding, ding. So you know when videos are going live, there'll be a video on the screen. Hopefully, give it a click. Otherwise, it's grillamind.com. Force our Simon. You can start to get 10% off. They've got brand new creatine products. Everyone loves creatine. Patreon dot Simon316. Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter. What else do we have? I'm so tired I forgot. Simon J. Miller on the TikTok. Simon Miller on Cameo. If you want to do one of those, and I've got some time at the moment, right? In the evening. So I'll do one of those. Simon J. Miller on the TikTok. Simon Miller on Cameo. If you want to do one of those, and I've got some time at the moment, right? In the evenings. So I'd love to do them at the moment. Pro Wrestling Tees. Samson Athletics for merchandise. Otherwise, thank you for staying with me. We shall now get back to regular content. Check out all of my live thoughts for WrestleMania over at What Culture Wrestling. Otherwise, take care, my friends, and maybe I'll see you on this last match tour.